We're looking at the 2017 AP Chemistry FRQ question number seven. This is our last four point question. The first part here says a student wants to determine the concentration of peroxide H2O2 in a solution of peroxide aqueous. The student can use one of the two titrants, either dichromate ion or cobalt ion. The balanced chemical equations for the two uh, titration reactions are shown below. The half reactions and the E0 values for the systems related to the titrations above are given in this table. Now, use the information in the table to calculate the following. The E0 for the reaction between chromate and peroxide and the E0 for the reaction between cobalt and peroxide, both at 298. Now, looking at this, this is a lot of information. So what I do is say, well, first off, I want to do chromate and I want to mix it up with uh, peroxide, we can see that all these half reactions, these are all reduction half reactions. Okay, and we can tell that because everybody is gaining electrons. So one of these for each pair, one of these is going to have to happen in the forward direction, and the other one's going to have to happen in the reverse direction. Well, if I'm looking for chromate, here's chromate right here, so this reaction would have to happen in the forward direction. And I need to have peroxide, working in the reverse direction, so it's going to have to be this one, this peroxide. So these are the two equations that I would uh, assemble together, and I would have to flip this reaction around and cancel out my electrons, things like that. But the formula for figuring out my E0 is pretty easy, because this one is going to be this number, the 1.33, this is going to be my E0 of reduction, and because I'm going to flip this around, I'm going to change the sign, and I'm going to change the label. I'm going to call that my E0 of oxidation. So for the first one here, the E of the cell is equal to my reduction potential plus my oxidation potential, which is 1.33 volts plus negative 0 0.70 volts which equals positive 0.63 volts. So that's my answer to I. Now I can do the same thing here with uh, II, uh, but this time I'm trying to do cobalt ions and peroxide. Cobalt 2 plus ions, so that's this one. So this is going to be my reverse reaction, and I need a forward reaction that has my peroxide, so I'm going to use these two. So this number here the 1.77, that's going to be my reduction potential because I'm using it as is, and this one here will be my uh, oxidation potential. So in the same way, the E0 of this is going to be my E0 of reduction plus my E0 of oxidation, which is 1.77, I'm sorry, because I changed this to oxidation, I have to change that sign. Don't forget to do that. So this is 1.77 plus negative 1.84 volts. And that comes out to be negative 0 0.07 volts. So those are my first two answers here. And this is worth two points. And the two points is for figuring out the E0 for I and E0 for II. Now the next part is also worth two points. And it says, based on the calculated values, the student must choose the titrant for which the titration reaction is thermodynamically favorable at 298. So which titrant should the uh, student choose? Well, this one here, the one that has got a positive voltage, positive voltage means that it's thermodynamically favorable, spontaneous reaction. This one, okay, since it's a negative voltage, that is not going to occur. You can force it to occur, like with a battery, but it's not going to occur by itself. So you need something with a positive voltage. So the answer we would pick here is uh, which titrant? The uh, dichromate. Okay, that's what we want to choose, and explain the reason because it's the only one that has a positive uh, E0 value. Okay, that's the one that'll be thermodynamically favorable. So, uh, like I, I, calculate the value of delta G. Now you say, where does delta G come into all this? Okay, there are three different chapters. Okay, we have equilibrium, 
and we have thermodynamics with delta G, and we have electrochemistry. And these three values that we talk about all tell us whether a reaction is going to be product favored. If we end up with a K that is greater than 1, then that means that reaction is going to go. It's going to have a, a very product favored. E0 values that are positive, positive voltages, okay, those are things that are going to be product favored. And delta G's that are negative, negative values, less than 1, those are going to be product favored. And we can, calc we can uh, move from one to the other. There are equations on the equation sheet that help us do this. Well, what we have figured out, we've figured out our E0 value. So now we want to go back and say, well, what were the delta G? So we want E0 and delta G. We want this reaction. So we're just going to go back now and do this. So we're say delta G, which is what we're trying to find, is negative N F E0. And N is the number of moles that were transferred during this equation. So we have to go back. We're talking about the chromate equation. So way back here, this chromate, okay, we can't really see how many uh, electrons are being transferred, but if we look at these two equations, and we would have to turn, I know, this one around, okay, in order to do this. And a little side note, and that is these numbers, okay, we're going to take this guy, two electrons and six electrons, we're going to multiply this equation by three, but when we do that, we do not change these numbers. This is not like Hess's Law. Because these numbers over here, these voltages were made by measuring everything against one standard cell. And because we measured everything against the same standard cell, all the uh, two electrons, four electrons, that's all been taken into account already. So we're just going to use those numbers as we did here, just the uh, reduction of oxidation potential, so no multiplying. But we can see what's going to happen. Six electrons, we're going to multiply that, six electrons. So when we get done, those six electrons are going to cancel out, and that is the value of N. So it's negative six moles of electrons. Okay, Faraday, that's 96,400, 96,500, let me look that up. 96,485. And, you know, I'm going to move down here because I don't have enough room. So, uh, so delta G equals negative. Okay, 6 moles of electrons. 96,485. And this is um, Coulombs per mole of electrons. And the voltage there, that is uh, 63 volts, 0.63 volts. And something that we learn here is that a volt is equal to a uh, joules per coulomb. So I can make this guy joules divided by coulombs. And um, this is joules, but we need, delta Gs are usually kilojoules. So I'm going to put in the fact that there's a thousand joules in one kilojoule, and it did ask for kilojoules per mole of reaction. So for this one reaction, okay, I have six moles of electrons, moles of electrons, okay, um, and that's officially six moles of electrons for every mole of reaction. So that's where that mole of reaction comes in. Okay, coulombs drop out, joules drop out, and I'm left with kilojoules. So this is something that I'm a little confused with, you know, I only learned this recently, that uh, a volt is a joule, joule per coulomb. And there's a little uh, conversion in the f formula sheet. So change volts into joules per coulombs. So when everything is done, then our delta G is equal to negative 360 uh, kilojoules per mole of reaction. Phew. Okay. And that's worth our second point. So just the fact that we know any one of these three, we can figure out the other ones. Okay, it's not always trivial, but it's, you know, doable. And watch your units. Watch out your units. So the fact that the volts there, don't forget to change joules to kilojoules. Um, that mole of reaction comes in over here. And then we end up with our answer, negative 360. So that's question number seven.